ओम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम ओम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम ओम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम रेडियल डिविनिटी इज इमोटल आत्मा स्वरूप टुडे वी हैव ए गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर परम पूज्य स्वामी मुक्तानंद जी इज नोन टू सम ऑफ यू ऑलरेडी He has graced our ashram before, and we are delighted to see Swamiji back. Om Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram. Om Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram. Om Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram. Pranams to all of you, Swamiji, brothers and sisters. Can you tell us what is to be shared? Hari Om Swamiji, can you kindly tell us, as seekers, what it means to strive to be the ideal Ram and the ideal Sita? As you all know, we come from Ananda Ashram, where the mainstay of the ashram is chanting of Ram Nam, Om Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram. here the ram stands for the nirguna nirakara shashwata ananda swaroop papa named this was started by parampuja papa swami ramdas and parampuja mata ji krishna bai who was the first and foremost disciple so papa defines ram as the subtle and mysterious power and whose presence has been touched and kindled and made known to many of the devotees either through the nirguna nirakar or through the saguna sakar but in ashram the impersonal aspect is stressed more and papa scaled the heights through holding on to the holy and our powerful ram nam but at the same time he made us aware that it was not merely chanting the name along with chanting the name meditation was also going on simultaneously that means what ram stands for for a seeker what ram stands for here papa advises us to have some more clarity on the word god ram he asks us to go to our source of all sources where from we have originated not only we as a person but also the entire universe so first he says if you remember his exact words try to go to the origin of your and the world life this preparation is necessary so that the nama chanting does not stay at the superficial level at the same time it slowly percolates inside and when we chant the name the mind is trying to identify or associate with that idea so when we try to trace the origin of us normally we say we have come from our parents it is true but at the same time those who have got some agricultural background they will be able to easily understand when you plant a tree say for a mango tree or a coconut tree the mango tree comes from a mango seed the mango seed has come from another tree that tree has come from another mango seed that mango seed has come from another tree so we can keep on repeating it so which is the first mango seed the intellect may find it difficult to get an answer similarly we are born to our parents our parents were born to their parents 
they were born to their parents we can keep on repeating it up to two or three generation probably we might be able to identify beyond that the intellect will not be able to do that but at the same time we know we are here so there has to be a the first cause you know the uncaused cause when we don't get an answer we go to the shastras in bhagavad gita the lord says i am the eternal seed of everything bija maam sarva bhutana so we do we do not have any clear cut idea about the word god we believe in the shastras so there is an unknown factor <coughs> unknown in the sense not clear so god is there he is there for our very human birth he is the first seed primordial and when we were in our mother's womb during the nine and a half months the say as a seed sprouts and gets tap root feeder root stem branches leaves and what not when we were in our mother's womb more than 300 or 400 organs <coughs> came out of that all brilliant organs well coordinated organs each one is trying to coordinate with the other and when we came out we did not bring anything at all papa wants us to go to that source <coughs> and when we came out we did not bring anything the present me and mine in us did not do anything for our very birth nor for the four hundred or five hundred organs nor did we bring anything when we came out as soon as we land we need first air to breathe water to drink earth to exist space to move about 98.4 degree fahrenheit temperature to keep us alive we need sun we need rains metals minerals gases vegetables pulses fruits what not trees we did not bring anything so suddenly we start realizing that power which has been responsible for our very birth that power which has been responsible to give us this body mind intellect equipment with which we are now functioning that power which has provided everything for our basic existence and then when we started growing we started demanding creature comforts one by one right from the trees at that time we cannot wish now we can dish brush paste soap wash basin come out eatables language education field of profession family everything you just imagine the book the amplifier the mic the glass the stool the construction we did not do anything through his selected instruments in the form of discovery invention and innovation the same power has been trying to give us all our creature comforts so what is needed of our basic existence is provided by that power what is needed for our comfortable living it is again provided by the same power but when we react to events and individuals we start from me and mine totally oblivious of the the, the creator and the great provider papa says give a name to that so this ram stands for our origin and the great provider who has been providing everything to us which fact unknowingly unwittingly we are not aware so constant chanting of his name enables us to link ourselves with the author of our being
to many it may not be easily possible to think about this abstract because this power is still is still a, a concept in us because as we keep on chanting still the mind might be struggling to fix a point on on what this ram stands for because so far whenever we talk about somebody when we uh, bring out a word it represents something which is tangible palpable but here it is not my origin it is not tangible the power that has been providing everything to me is not so the mind is struggling to fix so for such as the people who who find it difficult the same power has also provided forms and if the form has to come a human form a human because we are all human beings we will be able to connect ourselves with others through a human being so then itihasas puranas everything came avatars everything came. and then lord sri ramachandra murthy of ayodhya no? there has to be a, a reason for his birth there has to be a reason for his mission in life so there is a, a series of incidents and then this ram stands for all that is good and great purushottama ram maryada purushottam in india we say that maryada purushottam who personifies all that is good and great at the same time he lived like a human being so that if we as we we are human being we will be able to connect ourselves with that so slowly we try to understand that the unknown power the uh, inexplicable power that mysterious subtle and mysterious power in order that we try to go nearer to that this form has also come and when we talk about sita there are two dimensions you know in anything one is the static and the other is the dynamic now there is silence the sound comes all of us are in a position to hear the sound because there is the silence soundlessness as the base soundlessness stands for the static sound stands for the dynamic so the purusha prakriti and purushottama in vedantic language so the prakriti you know that is the dynamic aspect that is easily that is manifested clearly we can say that it stands for sita rama stands for the static aspect in this can be these are all relative uh, explanations each one can define as we keep on going deeper and deeper into it anything can be defined in that way many of you might have heard about lord shiva being talked as ardhana rishwa have you heard that part of it is parvati part of it is lord shiva that means static and dynamic so we can taking clue from that we can also attribute rama and sita as the static and dynamic aspect now is it only a, a intellectual exercise no it has got everything to do with our very life so papa has prescribed a triune path because i am not aware that i have this life has been given by me by the given by given to me by the power nor am i aware that all the thing that i am having now all the thing that i am enjoying now all the thing by which i exist now uh, is provided by that i don't know that so he says first you chant the name concentration or no concentration chant let it get habituated in our mind 
even our, even unknowingly the nama will start coming to us it becomes a second nature for us as we keep on chanting it we have a fairly a good idea that it stands for our very substratum our source and from where we have come and all that we are enjoying today in the form of mother nature in the form of society everything has come from that power that only that much we know then when we start chanting and when we find we do not find any progress progress in the sense in identifying this subtle and mysterious power in us then papa at that time says you add two or three dimensions one is why do you chant you keep on asserting or affirming to yourself that you are chanting the name of one who is within you who is making you to chant i am chanting the name of one who is within me who is making me to chant initially the guru says we believe that that is how he slowly makes us to enter and then none of us will be able to chant throughout our waking time to many of us probably god has given us family profession society in our case some organization some institution so we will not be able to chant throughout our waking period how do we remember it so then papa says whatever activities you do no his own words are outer activity should be compatible with inner aspiration inner aspiration is to remember it any work right from the moment we get up in the morning till we retire to bed whatever we do we try to remember that it has come from him it has come from him it has come from him previously we were taking it as granted now a conscious effort is being made to identify the author of everything and this is called seva so when we start identifying everything to that source what comes out of us is whenever we handle anything we hand we try to handle it with a touch of love not in a half assured way not in an absent minded way not in a slip shod clumsy irregular half hearted way because we start recognizing anything and everything as the form of god for the simple truth we are not proud we don't know the other so a touch of love a touch of perfection a touch of dedication a touch of gratitude because everything papa used to bluntly say unless you link yourself with the other of your being your life is in vain it is for that purpose we are chanting it is for that purpose that we are handling everything so this is called seva and now comes the crucial part dhyana here we get a clear cut idea about what ram stands for what sita stands for he say when you go within try to close your eyes when the mind is going here and there not getting concentrated on this aspect you take to mental chanting there are two types of three types of chanting vocal silent and mental we will straight away go to the mental chanting so when we keep on chanting this vocal om shri ram jay ram jay jay ram when we try to habituate our mind to repeat it in any tune that is okay for us the purpose is to arrest all dissimilar thoughts and pull the entire attention on that particular sound and when the mind becomes slowly peaceful or calm we start hearing our own chanting
who is hearing, who is chanting. Papa says, utterance of God's name is to make the mind ultimately still free from all thoughts. It is in the stillness that you know and realize God. For a tries, for a second, probably we may be able to get a taste of that. Again the mind comes out. So there Papa says, you start watching certain activity that is going on in your mind, in, inside you. And then try to trace the origin of it. For example, the heart beats one lakh times a day. Suddenly we realize, do we do anything? We can feel the pulse, you know, tuck, 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 on an average 70 times in a, in a minute. Suppose we say stop, will it stop? It goes on like an automator. Then Papa says, the blood circulates from head to toe. One doctor revealed to us that six liters of blood is traveling 1,20,000 kilometers a day in our body. That is why we can move like this. Do we do anything? We are asking. When we eat, when the food stuff goes inside, immediately the digestive aspects gets activated. Whatever is needed for our body, whatever is needed for our bone, what is our, whatever is needed for our blood, it takes. Whatever is not needed, it is purged out in the form of stools and urine. Do we do anything? The breathing goes on. The required quantum of oxygen goes in. Excess of carbon dioxide that is there, it is purged out without our knowing. So we try to now know, understand, there is a power. There is a power behind the heartbeat. There is a power behind this digestion. There is a power behind the blood circulation. There is a power behind the breathing. We may not be able to explain, but we may be able to go nearer to that. So during our dhyana, inward journey, this Ram stands for that power, which is, that is why he named it as subtle and mysterious power. Now he has become closer now. So when we try to slowly understand, absorb all these things, We find the static aspect is the power, mysterious power. The dynamic aspect is the heart works, the heart beats, the blood circulates, the digestion takes place, the breathing goes on. That is why we exist as individuals. And then we slowly realize that this has been with us right from the seed level up to this moment. And we were not aware. So Ram has been with us. There was not a single time when he has been away from us. Because the moment he is away, we don't exist. So constant remembrance helps us to connect ourselves with him. So far we have been thinking we are individuals. We start from me and mine only. Now we slowly start try, trying to understand that this me and mine has been given to us by him. And he has been with us. Even when we were not praying, we were not recognizing, we were not chanting, we were not worshipping, probably we would not even deny him, he has not left us. So, 
Ja, maar het biedt niet aan. So as a spiritual seeker, we, can be, we will be able to blend the both the Saguna and the Guna aspects. In Ashram, though Rama stands for this Nirguna Nirakar aspect, in our Arati, most of us are not having that blend because right from our childhood we have been uh, worshipping the form with total faith and devotion and most of us or many of us have got some thrill, some experience, some inexplicable pleasant feeling the moment we remember about that form, whether it is the form of a deity or in the form of a guru. Even in our bhajan, just now we heard, along with all the deities, we were also bringing the Guru's form, Shiva That means on par we have placed. And so, those of us who feel comfortable with the Saguna Saga, with this background, otherwise what happens after some time, the mind may raise so many questions. If there is a, a unshakable faith, there is no problem. But God has also given us this, He is making us to pass through now a probing tendency, analytical approach, cause and effect theory. So the mind may raise so many questions, especially the uh, this present generation. So when they ask certain questions, many of us may not be able to answer because ours is based on faith. So now, those of us who feel, feel that this question comes, you know, only because of that. So suppose we try to blend both these aspects, then it will be easy for us to understand. And when we convey this to somebody, they will also be able to understand to some extent. So this Saguna and Narguna. Vinobhaji, Acharya Vinobhaji, a great saint who was in India, he had written elaborately about this Saguna form and Narguna form. There he says, actually though we say it is Saguna, Saguna means you know, with form. Though we worship to a form, now, for example, we put a garland, we offer flowers to the Gurudev's image, we offer the Nevedya, we offer the Arati, no? But Gurudev stands there untouched, unaffected, no? Today you do that, tomorrow you forget about it, day after tomorrow you do that, he will not complain, why do you did not do that? Whatever we offer, we take it back. He doesn't own anything. None of the deities take anything. <coughs> we offer the flowers, we offer Abhishek, we remove that. We put them, we give a dress, we remove that. We offer uh, Nevedya, we remove that. We put Chandan, we remove that. No? We put Vibhuti, we remove that. But it remains untouched, unaffected, unruffled by anything. So Vinobhaji says, is it not the height of Nirguna? So through Saguna, we are trying to see the Nirguna. Why the Saguna came? Because we have got name and form. To connect ourselves with an abstract theory, a truth, it is difficult. Rare or the rarest have done it. But we need a harmonious blend of these two. So that is why we give importance in all our bhajans, but we were chanting here now, glorifying the, 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 the aspects of form, Saguna aspect. Easy for us, we enjoy that. But at the same time, we should try also now to try to connect ourselves with the Nirguna aspect. A simple thing is that you now when we when we look at something, you know. The I see. We hardly try to understand the power behind the seeing. 
in Kano Upanishad, when the dialogue starts between the teacher and the taught, when he, the disciple asks, what is, what is that power, subtle and mysterious power? So the Guru says, it's so easy to understand, that because of which the eyes see, which cannot be seen by the very eyes. The eyes see, but there is a power behind the eyes. And this at all. Shrotasya Shrotra, hearing, manaso manoyad, vachoha vacham, pranasya prana, chakshusha chakshuhu, adhimucha dhira. So behind all the sense organs, there is a power that activates the sense organs. That is why the sense objects are perceived or experienced. That power. We are carried away by the sense organs and the sense objects. We hardly think about the power behind this. That power is the nirguna aspect. And what is seen is the sound aspect. So there should be a, a harmonious blend of these two in spiritual journey. So Papa has placed before us this triune path so that there is no divide between spiritual and worldly. Previously we were thinking anything that is connected with the spirit is called spiritual. Anything that is connected with the material is called the worldly. So, but actually it is not. Papa emphatically says that both should go hand in hand. Spiritual science and material science should go hand in hand. Because one is the <coughs> Purusha, the other is the Prakriti. Both Prakriti and Purusha are in the Purushottama. So first we try to intellectually understand and uh, Puja Swami Chidanji Maharaj in one of his books, he has mentioned this. Daily sadhana and daily life. A very, very, very thought-provoking article. There should be a harmonious blend of these two. While the daily sadhana enables me to remember him, so that my subservience to him become more and more stronger, the me and mine gets reduced, and to that action, my love circle keeps on expanding. So that means the quality of my life gets improved. And how will I know that I have understood? Intellectual understanding is no good. Then he says daily life. Daily life is given to you by him to test your daily sadhana. We may fail. We may forget. But again, next day morning we try to do in our own way. Nama chanting, going within bhajan, swadhyay, so many things under the heading of sadhana. And then we enter into our family life, professional life, social life. That is the field. How do we react to events and individuals? That is the test. So whenever we fail, he makes us realize that we have failed. And then we pray to him next day, I completely forgot about you. I started again identifying myself as myself. And because of that, so many things happened. Please, enable me to remember you. When you have made me to involve in so many things, kindly ensure that you make me aware that you have given me this job. So that I, the, me and mine will not Come and assert. So this, this, this is what everyday life, you know. This is applicable for everybody. So that is why it has been specifically mentioned that there is no divide between spiritual and worldly. Everyone is leading a spiritual life, knowingly or unknowingly. So again, coming back to the question. So here we can take that Ram stands for the subtle and mysterious power who is behind all our thoughts, words and deeds. And Sita stands for all that is manifested here. We always attribute mother, you know. Prakriti. It has come from that. So she stands for that. He stands for this. 
and I am remembering him, Vichan. Is it whatever name you uh, <coughs> chant? Koi, what is the that? Koi, Ram, or Ram, or Ram, Ram, or Shyam, Ram, or Sita. It's all right. Whatever it may be, it stands for this, it stands for this, it stands for this. We keep on reminding. And then ultimately, we are comfortable with the form, we are also comfortable with the formless. Initially, it is needed to hold on to a name and form. And why so many? That question also will not be. Because each one develops an affinity towards one particular form. Right from our childhood. The Indian tradition is we have a small puja room. So when we were children, immediately after our bath, mother used to say, go to the puja room, do pranams to the lady, take some kumkum or vibhuti or whatever it is there, pray. We don't know, we did not question anything. No? So we develop an affinity towards that form. And uh, proportionate to the intensity or the sincerity we have towards, mm -hmm. we develop, you know, in inexplicable joy. As children, you know, especially when during our exam period, we become more devotional. <laughs> At that time, you know, nobody need tell us any philosophy. <laughs> Half a dozen times you go and do that, and even after writing the exam and waiting for the result, how our one point uh, uh, devotion will be there. After that, it gets diluted, annoying. <laughs> Again, God gives us so many tests, ups and downs. So that during the downs only we will remember him. During the ups we may hardly remember him. So then later on we come to know he is giving us to, making, subjecting us to go through these ups and downs only to draw us to himself. Where we go and plead, appeal, cry. You know. And then now when we sit, when we are drawn by a spiritual preceptor and when he conveys to us all these and we try to go back to our life so far lived, and then try to fit in. Oh, correct. That is why he did that. That is why he made me to fail. He made me to lose. He made me to uh, gain. He made me to get insulted. He made me to get appreciation. All the, oh, he's working, he's working, he's working. Because he is the origin. He has got a purpose. And uh, our, old, our old habits still will come and torment us. Now in a, in a sattvic mood, we will be able to rely on our, to, to dwell upon this more and more. But the moment we go out, we take the car, then, then some come, something comes, something happens, your mobile says something, immediately we come back to the original and then start dealing on that level. So we need, that is, the, that is why the relevance of satsang. <coughs> Since we are all involved in various, multivarious activities, where uh, he makes us to uh, face challenges, duties, commitments, and what not. Uh, periodical retreat, periodical satsang, daily sadhana, all these things will help us a lot to get ourselves riveted to this truth. Uh, in the spiritual ladder, Papa used to define four steps. First, it starts with bhakti, devotion. Then comes vairagya, that is the stem. Bhakti is the root, vairagya is the trunk, jnana is the flower, parabhakti is the fruit. This is how he has explained. Bhakti is the root, devotion. First, we don't know anything, we know there is a power. So, I, we develop a relationship between the Bhakta and the Bhagavan, which is called the starting point in our spiritual life. Then, in order to concentrate more and more on that, or in order to give our mind space more and more for that, I have to recede, withdraw from 
as many other distractions as possible, which is called Vairagya. Vairagya doesn't mean we have to renounce everything and go. When we come to realize that everything has been given by him, given by him, given by him, then the Vairagya has already started becoming explicit. Because it is not ours, you know. No ownership, no possessiveness, no attachment, no binding. So Vairagya. Then comes this Jnana, where we try to go through this, the, the life force. The life force expressing itself in the form of awareness or consciousness, <coughs> expressing itself in the form of intelligence, primordial intelligence, <coughs> and all those things, this Jnana. And then what comes? It is there in everybody. The author is the one Though varied manifestations are there, Vinobhaji used to say, the same, an artist with the same paint brush, on the same canvas, he brings out various caricatures, each one touching and kindling different types of emotions in us. But everything has originated from one source. So we try to see, this is the Parabhakti state, where we, we try to identify anything and everything with him. So these are all the four stages. Bhakti is the root, Vairagya is the trunk, Jnana is the flower, Parabhakti is the fruit. And the moment we step into this, mysteriously, he will guide us. From inside as well as from outside. That will give a push to our spiritual journey. Because the moment he knows that uh, the sense of individuality which is given by him has started turning towards him, he mysteriously places us through different milestones. And that awareness slowly starts clearing all our hurdles. Today we are, we are celebrated, no? Ganesh Chaturthi. We invoke God in the form of Lord Ganesha, who is the remover of all these hurdles, Vigra Ishwara. Symbolic, there is a form, there is a joy in worshipping. At the same time, we come to realize that He who is within us, he is making us to remember that he, though he may put the hurdles, he will remove the hurdles the moment we turn towards him. The meaning that we, we understand that he has put the hurdles. When we, we, when we feel that hurdles are put by so and so, so and so, normally we attribute to three factors, you know, when hurdles are there. Either to a person or to an object or to a situation. When we know all these three have been given by him, then there is no huddle. For reasons unknown to us, he has placed it, that's all. There is the matter. So that aspect has been symbolically brought out in the form of Lord Vinayaga and he makes us to celebrate Vinaya Chaturthi. Not merely the outer activities. Outer, outer activities should be there. If only the philosophy is there, we will not get the joy. So we elaborately prepare everything, we offer that, we uh, recite glories about him, we offer flowers, we offer different types of nevedya, we distribute to everybody. In knowingly or unknowingly, we are trying to reach out. You know? When somebody is singing a beautiful bhajan, so many people get uh, thrilled. You know? Reaching out, we don't know. We feel that we are we are doing bhajan. No. God makes us to do the bhajan so that <laughs> his, his remembrance is touched and kindled in as many hearts as possible. Which fact when I come to know, I will become so sweet and so effective. So these are all some of the things which came up when this question was raised. We don't know whether we have answered your question. Uh, if anything more is there, you can tell. 
whatever he has made us to share, he will, he will try to share.